Okay, we're going to find the arc length of this function here from the point 1, 1 to the point 8, 4. Now we have two options of formulas for finding the arc length of a function. We would use this first option here if we were given y as a function of x, and the second formula if we were given x as a function of y. So in this example, since we're given y as a function of x, we're just going to use this formula right here. And we're integrating with respect to x, so our lower limit of integration is going to be 1, and our upper limit of integration is going to be 8. You'll notice in this formula that we have a dy dx. So what we need to do is differentiate this equation right here with respect to x. That means multiplying by 2 thirds, subtracting 1 from that power. And now we're going to plug this into the formula for the arc length, and that is going to give us, and this is not an easy integral to complete. The first thing I'm going to do is just a little bit of algebra. I'm going to keep going with the algebra. And now I'm going to find a common denominator within that square root. I just called 1 x to the 2 thirds over x to the 2 thirds. Now I can combine two fractions. And you may notice now that we can take the square root of the denominator. If we take the square root of x to the 2 thirds power, we just get x to the 1 third. So I'm going to rewrite this doing that. Okay, now finally we're in a position where we can start to actually integrate this. This is going to look like a u substitution. If we choose our u as the thing under the radical, when we differentiate, we get du is 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third dx. Now you'll notice that there is an x to the 1 third in the denominator, so we do actually have a du in this integral. That will be a little bit more clear if we multiply both sides of this little mini equation by 3 halves, and if we rewrite x to the negative 1 third as 1 over x to the 1 third. Now you'll notice that this piece of the integral is just going to be 3 halves du. That is going to turn our integral into the square root of u times 3 halves du. And since we had an integral with respect to x, and now it's an integral with respect to u, I'm going to go ahead and change the limits. When x equals 1, you can plug that into the little formula up here to find u, and u is going to be just 1 plus 4 ninths, which is 13 ninths. Now looking at the upper limit of integration, when x equals 8, u is going to be 8 to the 2 thirds plus 4 ninths. 8 to the 2 thirds, let's see. If you take a cube root of 8, that's 2, and then if you square that 2, that's 4. 4 plus 4 ninths should be 49. So our limits on our integral with respect to u aren't too pretty, but they are 13 ninths to 40 ninths. Now pulling the 3 halves out of the integral, and I'll go ahead and write this square root of u as u to the 1 half, we can actually integrate now. And what happens is pretty neat. We add 1 to the power of 1 halves to integrate, giving us u to the 3 halves. And then in the process of integration, we have to divide by that 3 halves power, which cancels with the 3 halves outside of the integral, leaving us just with u to the 3 halves, evaluated from 13 ninths to 40 ninths. Plugging in our upper and lower limits of integration gives us this result, which is perfectly fine if you're just plugging this into maybe a computer system or just into your calculator to get a decimal. If you're wondering how to simplify something like this, I'll show you in the next couple of steps. A 3 halves power is the same thing as taking a square root and then cubing that. We can take the square root of 9 for both terms, and then if we cube everything, we get 27 in the denominator of both terms, so we may as well combine them. And in case it's been a little while for you, the square root of 40 cubed is just the square root of 40 times itself three times. The same is true for the square root of 13. The square root of 40 multiplied by itself is just 40. The same is true with the 13. And we may as well go one step further. The square root of 40 can be split up into the square root of 4 and the square root of 10, which gives us two square roots of 10. And if we plug that back in for the square root of 40 here, we get 40 times 2, which is 80 square roots of 10 minus 3. 13 square roots of 13 over 27 is the final simplified answer that you'd find in maybe the back of a book. Now those last several steps were just algebra. If you're okay just plugging it into a calculator, then your correct answer could be all the way up here. So I'm going to zoom out on this thing so you can see all of it, and I hope that video helped you, and I'll see all of you in the next video.